The Logic Lab is a collection of tools which allows for the rapid prototyping and development of computer-based proof in arbitrary logics. It comprises a proof assistant and a tool for the type secure specification of derivation rules written in single conclusion sequence calculus. This video cast is the first of three talks on the Logic Lab. The first talk, this talk, deals with the history of the development which led to the Logic Lab. The second talk deals with how to specify logics in the Logic Lab. And the third and final talk deals with how to construct proofs in the logic so described. The Logic Lab goes back to my days in the Laboratory for the Foundations of Computer Science at Edinburgh from 1988 to 1990. I was interested in the high-level specification of logical systems and brought this interest to Leeds from Edinburgh in 1990. In fact, during the mid-80s, proof assistants were an area of interest at Leeds under the auspices of the Centre for Theoretical Computer Science. The approach being studied at Edinburgh in the late 80s revolved around metalogics based on type theory, which could be used to describe other logical systems. My approach was different because I did not identify a pre-eminent metalogic in terms of which all other logics should be described. The problem is that in choosing a metalogic to represent reasoning in another logic, we are subject to a certain amount of indirection. We are, as it were, rather in the position of a person who is forced to eat pork ribs with chopsticks. Instead, I concede of a domain-specific language, or DSL, in which logic rules could be entered directly to the computer. This DSL was the prototype of the logic lab described in these talks. However, I also wanted to be able to program tactics in the manner of Milner's LCF. That is, I wanted to write programs which composed these logic rules into strategies which solved hard problems, and I wanted the computer to verify that these programs were type secure with respect to their usage of these rules. This required the DSL to be embedded within a statically typed programming language in which tactics could be written. I could have turned to ML, but I was a Lisp programmer and attracted to the freedom of Lisp. I then read a paper by Cardelli in which he laid out a sequence-based specification of a type discipline of a simple functional language. Influenced by this paper, I had the insight that since type checking was inherently deductive in nature, the type discipline of a language could be specified as a series of deduction rules. Using the techniques of high performance theorem proving, these rules could be compiled down into an efficient type checker. The type discipline would be free from the procedural baggage of low level encoding and presented in a form which was clear, concise and accessible to experimentation and extension by researchers in type theory. This was a bold conception that seemed eminently reasonable, but which in fact took many years of development to realise completely. I saw that this unknown programming language could actually use the approach Cardelli used, sequent calculus, the very same notation of my DSL. And hence we would have a programming language which supported the DSL and which used the DSL to support the programming language. It seemed quite beautiful in conception, and so I set out to build it. The first prototype version was called Rational Lisp and was the subject of a departmental report. Rational Lisp showed sufficient promise for me to build its successor, SQL, or Sequent Processing Language. SQL consisted of 23,000 lines of Lisp, much of it giving the type theory of a sizable chunk of common Lisp. SQL was first presented in 1992 in the 6th International Conference on Symbolic and Logical Computing held in Dakota and subsequently in 1993 in the International Joint Conference on Artificial Intelligence under the title A Language for Implementing Arbitrary Logics. Ichikai was and is a major international event which attracts thousands of scientists. 
SQL was used by Andrew Adams in 1994 to code a type secure version in Duct of the Boyle Moyle theorem prover in 6,000 lines of SQL, a feat which earned him a distinction to his MSc. The idea of having a purely deductive high level specification of the type theory of SQL was boldly in advance of the technology of the time. The limited power of the machines and the immaturity of the compiler technology inside SQL meant that Andrew could afford to take a coffee break while his program loaded. Note, even to attain this speed with the technology to hand required having to trim my ideals. Rational Lisp was developed on a Sun 350, clocking 15 MHz. SQL was run under a Spark 1, clocking 20 MHz. So for speed, the type system of SQL was written in an embedded prologue, not in sequent calculus. But user-defined types were written in sequent calculus and hence compiled into this embedded prologue. Shen inherited this arrangement, though a command exists to wipe out the pre-programmed type theory entirely and to replace it by a user-designed system crafted entirely by the user in sequent calculus. But, to my knowledge, this feature has only ever been used once by one person. SQL now resides in the CMU Museum of Artificial Intelligence, along with other landmark programs from that era. Because the DSL was embedded in SQL, it was never identified under a separate title, but was bundled in with the documentation attached to the language. Many of the ideas, now more perfectly realised in Shen, were present in SQL 30 years ago. There are certain parallels between the development of SQL and the development of ML. Both SQL and ML were driven by the need for the authors to pilot and develop work in automated reasoning. Both these systems were originally prototyped in LISP. In the case of ML, as Edinburgh ML, in support of the Edinburgh LCF. And finally, the programming languages developed to serve these applications were to outgrow the programs they supported. Thus, ML became standard ML, while the Edinburgh LCF became part of the history of computer science. Similarly, my DSL for fabricating logics was bundled in with my work in SQL. It was inherited by SQL's successor, QI, from 2002 to 2010, and the DSL was used to create a purely deductive multi-agent model of a transport system by Fay and Tarver, 2002, and was published as such. But Shen outgrew the original domain application in the same way that SML outgrew the Edinburgh LCF that hosted the first version of ML. Shen is now a general purpose programming language like standard ML. This DSL aspect of crafting logics was dropped when Shen was introduced as a portable replacement for QI in 2011. In 2017, Stephen Chang and a group published a paper on a system they called Turnstile which substantially reproduced the work I had done a quarter of a century earlier. This paper made a false claim of novelty, despite my informing Chang, prior to publication, that Turnstile had been anticipated by SQL in 1993. He was then challenged in public, but failed conspicuously to defend his abstract, and he later surfaced in 2021 with Turnstile Plus and a different set of collaborators, but still no references to SQL. I will have something more to say on this matter, but this is not the space. Therefore, I have decided to put matters right by making my past work available to the wider community. The 1993 paper is freely available, and so is SQL 7.0 from the CMU repository. However, the latter is now unsupported and superannuated. I have thus re-implemented the DSL in Shen and made it available as part of a library rather than, as before, a part of the language specification itself. Since Shen is a very powerful language, what follows in these lectures is implemented in 360 lines of code.
I have made free use of compiler improvements which were not available to me in 1993, but what is presented here is very similar to what was presented 30 years ago in Ichikai. This system is called the Logic Lab on the Shen site and it is free to use under BSD.